was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. see everybody. I promise if we hit those bells at 8.59, we would remain cool throughout the entirety of Mass. So uh, we're going to follow those rules, and I hope you enjoy. We come together to celebrate the contemporary rite of the Mass in this 14th week of ordinary time. So may we pray as we call upon God this day, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, bless us with the wisdom to praise you in spirit and in truth, so that by following your holy will, we may gain eternal salvation. My dear brothers and sisters, please be seated. And may we take this time to make a personal and private examination of conscience, confessing our sins before our Lord and God. Having confessed your sins, please now recite with me the second confidier. I confess to Almighty God, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned through my own fault, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done or failed to do. I ask the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Now it's interesting when we have July 5th on a Sunday after July 4th. July 4th we spend time ruminating on our freedom and uh, watching the blasts throughout the air uh, through all hours of the night, beginning maybe about 7 o'clock last night and going throughout. Uh, a joy to some, a, a pain to others. Uh, but today we get to spend some time in reflection. And uh, during this Holy Mass, I ask that you reflect upon the freedoms that are granted to you. And in a religious sense, the freedom that we have, which is not in every country in the world, to come together as a small denomination, as a small gathering, and able to worship our Lord and Savior freely. It's not a small thing throughout the scope of the world. So may we take time to pray over that and really enjoy our religious freedom. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And may our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You made them a kingdom and priests for our God, and they will reign on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now, and ever shall be. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, your Son invited us to come to him for refreshment. Give us the grace to learn from him so that our earthly burdens may be bearable and our souls may find peace and rest. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a hearing of Word of God, but also first, as we're preparing to hear the Word, I'll offer our announcements for the day. Today's Mass uh, is celebrated in loving memory of Bishop Stanley Belinsky that is offered by our Chairperson Elaine and Deacon Jim Pluskanka in honoring his birthday this week. Uh, looking at our schedule for this week, and for being pandemic, this is probably our busiest week. On Tuesday, we're going to have a, uh, a meeting at 6 p.m. to sort of go over what we're going to do for the Polish Fest. Uh, if anybody would like to chime in, that again, that'll be 6 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall on Tuesday. Wednesday, we serve our weekly food ministry, um, and uh, again, we are over 8,000 meals served since our inception. We hit that number, as in our bulletin show uh, last week, which was wonderful, wonderful uh, thing to uh, hang our hats on. And finally, Friday, uh, there were flyers sent out in your, in your emails and a couple posted in church. We will be having a Gawunky dinner, pigs in a blanket. You saw it on the sign over there, too. That'll be from 4 to 6. I know the last one was 5 to 7. This is 4 to 6, uh, and it'll be taking place uh, right here. Drive through, make a loop through here. You get your food, your happy five minutes Gawunky dinner. All right, let's change the mode. Let's calm our hearts for a hearing of the Word of God. A reading from the book of Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, 
Rejoice heartily, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished, and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. response to this morning's psalm is, I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever. I will praise your name forever my King and my God. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. I will praise your name forever, my Lord and my God. The Lord is faithful in all his works and holy in all his works. The, the Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up from all who bow down. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit. If only the Spirit of God dwells in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give you life to your mortal bodies also, through his spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors of the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the needs of the body, you will live. This is the word of the Lord. through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him, and our burden, and I will give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. seated. Come to me. These words are taken from today's Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise be the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Father Jason, faithful of St. Mary's, guests, and visitors, come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Before I begin, I need to apologize to John and Eileen, because I'm over here squinting, and they probably think I'm winking at them the whole time, and I apologize for that. Come to me. This is an invitation given to everyone that is in search of the truth. In search of the truth, it is very easily difficult, let me say that again, it is very easily difficult to understand a head-scratching paradox. Paradox, paradoia. For the heart, not the head, is the home of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The heart, not the head, is the home of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is not intelligence which shuts people out. It is pride, arrogance, conceit, smugness, e egotism, and vanity. Just like the rabbis and wise men rejected Jesus and his teaching, it is not stupidity which admits, which makes clean, which confesses, which acknowledges and concedes. It is humility. Humility on our knees. Simply, if there is something that is weighing you or me down, if we can't find an answer, if we can't find peace, if we're stressed out because of finances, because of relationships, because of illness, because of a pandemic. If we can't find a friend who has a truly open ear, then Jesus Christ wants to have a little talk with us. Why? Because he, capital H, in referring to he, as Jesus said, I will give you rest. Not might, not maybe, not I think, or based on research, or the best estimates show, but he says, I will give you, I guarantee you, I assure you, I pledge to you, and yes, I will, I will make a new covenant with you. Based on the word of God, the teachings of the church and the early church fathers, and the work of the Holy Spirit, we know, we know that he will give us rest because he has made a new covenant with his body and blood. 
the same body and blood that we share on his holy altar in the Holy Eucharist. How much? How much does he give? Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You are given a proverbial humanistic yoke to follow Christ. You will be fitted with the yoke upon your soldiers, shoulders, a perfectly fitting yoke. Now there's, when I was going through some of the commentaries, what I found in one was there is a story that Jesus was a yoke maker as a carpenter. And he created yokes that were perfectly fitting for oxen and other animals. Jesus will fit us perfectly with a yoke. Now, I don't have a team of oxen to de Wouldn't that be kind of cool, though, if I did? I don't have a team of oxen to demonstrate the repercussions of a bad fitting and what it does to their neck, etc. So I was going to bring my dogs. I have a St. Bernard and two Lab Labrador Retrievers uh, to demonstrate my point. Uh, but maybe I'll save that for St. Francis. And uh, when we celebrate St. Francis and the blessing of animals, uh, we don't want a Beethoven moment. But I do have an analogy that we all familiar with. And for some of us, it is a yoke. It is a challenge. I have face masks. This yoke, I mean this face mask, makes my glasses fog up. And then when I wear it in public, people come up to me and say, hey, you know what? If you press the little nose piece here, your glasses won't fog up. Well, I already know that, but it's not working. <laughs> this one, you put over your head, it's way too hot. I have another one, it just doesn't fit right. This one, I have hurts my ears and I got a rash on the back of my ears. I have another one that makes it too hard to breathe, but I know that's not true because Bart Buksevich posted a thing on Facebook the other day that clearly shows wearing a face mask doesn't impede your breathing. So I read that and I rejected that one. What's up, buddy? And then I have another one that keeps slipping down. Jesus wants us to take his yoke, his mask. He will measure it. He will custom make it for you. He will provide you a few special fittings, whatever is needed, so that this new burden of wearing a mask will be made light. And I want you to think about that word light, because I'm going to say it a few more times. Light. Yes, I'm talking about light as in weight. But I'm also talking about the light of Christ. Whatever is needed, He will make it light. The mask fitting also aligns our talents, whether it's dance, music, working, laboring. It will take our gifts of compassion, of love, of charity, of humility, of hospitality. It will take our needs, our challenges, and our abilities. He has a task for every single one of us, a commission that has been made perfect by God. A commission work for us that has been made perfect by God. Let this assignment this burden be turned into a song, a song of rejoicing to him. My notes show here that I'm supposed to sing a song at this point. And the only song I, I was supposed to sing was Our God is an Awesome God. But sitting over here, I think I, one of the songs I like to sing is From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. This morning, as that sun's hitting me, that's all I could think of. Carrying something that is heavy 
and required to be carried, a burden, if you will, makes it heavier. Let me say that again. Carrying something that is heavy, that is required to be carried, a burden, is made heavier. Remember, the Jewish religion was one of numerous laws, rules, and regulations. A heavy burden with heavy guilt and heavy penalties. Listen to the converse, what Jesus has brought in. That was the old, listen to the new. Yet to carry a child out of love, or to hold the hand of a parent in their last months of life, or to start, institute, a new democratic church like the Polish National Catholic Church, or to start, institute, a new democratic country out of love, like the United States of America, enables this statement to be true. What is carried in love is light. What is carried in love is light. Carrying a burden makes it heavier, but what is carried in love is light. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May we all together rise and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Father, the Creator, reveals the mysteries of the kingdom to the little ones, the children. Let us pray to our God who shows such love for the smallest and purest of creation. For Bishop Stanley Belinsky, as we offer Mass in memory of his service to God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parishioners, as we offer Mass for the love and dedication that they have in serving God with their ministries, volunteering, teaching, and fellowship, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the children in our parish and in our community, that they may be open to hear those mysteries of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the church in her work of charity for the poor and overburdened, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in our local communities, our state and country, that way they will listen to the humblest of citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters in need of Lord, our Lord's care, Richard and Edna Samuelson, Shannon Almarino, Jeremy Steinbrick, Mary Cauley, Eugene Began, Diane Black, Len Pryor, Emma Freshwater, Jennifer Kless, Jack Spilka, John Radin, Jim Giles, Tom Slocum, Kim Penny, Nina Breckwin, Tammy Tubal, Jan Sobolevsky, Debbie Washenko. For those in need of God's care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the joy and peace of the faithful departed, especially Bishop Belinsky. For Stuart Hoyt. For all departed friends and family members, our visitors and parishioners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, gathered in obedience to your Son's command, your people ask you to accept their prayers, always made through Jesus Christ our Lord. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Heavenly Father, through this offering, fill us with your spirit, refresh us, and show us your kindness. Bless us with the presence of your Son, in whose name we offer this sacrifice. We ask this to the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the same Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Give 
thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through his teaching and ministry, Jesus showed us how we are to live, giving our lives in service to you and all people. Still hearing his word in our world today, we strive to follow his example and set our hearts on the world to come. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints in the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating unceasingly. Jesus Christ, Father of mercy and God of all consolation, for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He then established the lasting memorial of your salvation. On the evening which he willingly surrendered himself, he took bread, gave you thanks, blessed it, and broke it, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which is given for you. When supper had ended, he took the cup. In the same way, he gave you thanks, blessed it, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. incarnation of your Son, his words and deeds, how he humbled himself and obediently accepted death, even death on the cross. Therefore you have raised him up and given him a name which is above every name, so that in heaven and under the earth every knee shall bow, and every tongue proclaim to the glory of God the Father, Jesus Christ is Lord. We offer the sacrifice of your Son before you, Father, with praise and thanksgiving, and ask that you accept this oblation. Send your Holy Spirit to fill these gifts of his life-giving power, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dearly beloved Son, where that the bread which we break may be the body of our Lord, and the cup over which we give thanks may be one with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the company of Mary, the Mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, with Holy Bill of Lord and all the saints together, with Anthony, our prime bishop, and Jerry, our bishop-elect, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, as well as your whole church, we praise and glorify you, and look forward to the coming of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, 
Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. May your mercy keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. The cup of blessing which we bless is an honor of participation in the blood of Christ. The bread which we break is an honor of participation in the body of Christ. divinity and humanity in Jesus Christ bring us sanctification and eternal life. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, by peace I give you. Do not look at our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of his peace. seated and as we prepare to receive uh, the most holy Eucharist whether spiritually or bodily after holy mass may we pray together the first communion prayer <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ son of the living God and by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit your death brought life to the world and by your holy body and blood free me from all my sins and from every evil Keep me faithful to your teaching, and never let me be departed from you. I will take the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. Our act of spiritual communion. Most loving Jesus, I adore you in the most blessed sacrament in which you are truly present. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart 
and heal my soul. I embrace you and unite myself with you. May I never be separated from you. Inflame my heart with the fire of your love, my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been made one with your Son in this Holy Eucharist proclaim with our lives what we profess this day with our lips. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. O oh Lord, be with you. Before I offer the blessing and Deacon Jim offers the dismissal, I remind you that at the conclusion of Holy Mass, uh, we will have our Star Spangled Banner. We'll face the flag that is right behind us. Uh, and then we will have communion available for those who wish to receive immediately following the Star Spangled Banner. Again, as I remind you, we will uh, administer communion to family units. So if you're with your family, be together so we don't get disinfect 40 times instead of, you know, 50 times or something like that. So uh, please come together for that if you wish to receive. With that said, may the almighty and merciful God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.